What's up, ladies and gentlemen? How's it going? It's Dan here from Cryo Noir, and it's been about a month, month and a bit, since the last devlog, so I thought I would just do another quick one, uh, just to let you know where I was up to, what was happening with the game, and let you know all of the progress I've been making. I suppose we won't mess about too much. This is where we are with the game so far. So if you remember back to the last devlog, you'll remember that I'd finished designing and modelling the character of my game. Remember? Remember? Fortunately, the character was uh, a, a little thick in the old polygon count, as in 60 times more polygons uh, than was reasonable. <sighs> I did a little investigating, and I found that the primary offender was the hair, uh, making up nearly two and a half million polygons, following by the laces and by the piping around the edges of the jumpsuit. In Blender, I'd use a process where you like create a flexible string type thing um, that you could then alter the thickness of and also make into sort of whatever shapes you really wanted to. I mean, while this was great for making the laces and the hair, I mean, it's it's not like I worked this out by myself. It seems to be one of the main ways that people make both laces and quote unquote low poly hair in Blender. It is insanely intensive on the old polygons. First off, I redesigned the boots to have straps rather than laces. Uh, I sort of changed the design somewhat um, and then got them down to so, uh, certainly a more reasonable 13,000 polygons, uh, which was a really big <laughs> a big improvement on the uh, around about a million polygons that they were before. Uh, next up, I tackled the kind of red piping that ran around the edge of the jumpsuit. This section alone uh, was trimmed down from around 270,000 polygons down to a mere 2,000 uh, without losing a vast amount of detail, uh, particularly the sort of distance the player would be reviewing them from. So just by tackling all the piping and the boots, I managed to reduce the polygon count for the model by over 3 million. So I just need to be that successful with the hair, uh, and then I'll be golden. I started by stripping out the geometry that you obviously couldn't see from each section of the hair, so that would have been like the undersides that would have been obscured by, by the top side. Uh, bearing in mind there was a lot of hair sections, this took forever. After spending hours on this, I had only done the main body of the hair. While there was still a lot that could be trimmed out of this one, we were still at over 400,000 polygons just in this section alone. Now that's a big saving from around about the 1 million polygon section, but even so, there was absolutely no way that I was going to be able to get this section, plus the ponytail and the fringe sections, down to anything like reasonable, bearing in mind that we were still sort of well over 2 million from where we needed to be. Uh, it was time for a different approach, I think. I redid the hair using the same technique, only this time I didn't make the individual sections um, ripped. <laughs> Rib. For her pleasure. Ew. So just by doing that, I was able to cut the, the whole hair section down to around about 600,000 polygons, uh, which is still an awful lot, but it's a significant reduction over the sort of around about 2 million that it was before. After another couple of years trimming, uh, I finally got them down to around about 200,000. That's not great, but it is usable. So next up, she needed rigging. First off, I tried to rig her using Maximo, and I spent altogether way too long playing around with the animations in Maximo. I can't begin to tell you how happy I was doing this. After hours and hours of seemingly no progress, every so often you just have these little moments where, where it all kind of comes together and it just makes the whole thing worth it. And then I remember that the fucking hair and the skin and the eye texture still aren't working and I just want to fucking die. But hey, you know, for a brief moment there, I think things were all good. So it turns out if you do any sort of complex materials in Blender, uh, they can't be exported in the FBX file format. So uh, that was all a, co a complete waste of time. Unless your materials are just flat block colours, you have to try to recreate them in whatever your destination software is, which, which is nice. So while watching the Maximo animations, uh, I also noticed that there was something going on with like a high-waisted jumpsuit that just kind of looks a bit weird. Uh, so I decided I would go back and while I was redoing the textures for the eyes and the hair and the skin, I would also trim down her suit a little bit uh, and also change up some of the stripes on it to make it look a little less, uh, a little less penisy. So finally, after months and months and months of fucking around in Blender, I 
I was going back to Unreal and I was actually going to start building my goddamn game. And it was fucking broken again. So for some reason, it wasn't compiling the C++ classes at launch. So any blueprint classes that I had made that were based on them then broke. After I recompiled the C++ classes, they did return, uh, but the dependencies for the blueprints still didn't fix themselves. So they had to be remade every single time. And then on restart, it just broke again. So, fucking another helpful little tip, um, turn off live coding, um, <laughs> turn it off in the settings, because it breaks everything, always. I don't, I don't know why it's there, it just breaks everything. So anyway, I fixed that and created a character controller, again. I did it in the Unreal third person C++ class template one, uh, as I wanted to access some of the Unreal's default animations, um, I would need them in the game, um, and I also wanted to add them to some of the animation packs that I'd also imported. And by making the character controller myself, it then wasn't full of all of the junk code that was within the uh, the template that I wasn't going to be using. I then got the Maximo rigged version of Re into the game, and I've got to say, I was really happy with how she turned out. I was kind of worried that it wouldn't look as good with the sort of single coloured hair, um, but I I, th I think she looks okay. I think it looks fine. The rig, however, would not work with Unreal's default rig without doing a whole load of retargeting. So I thought, is there an easier way for me to do this? I then tried Accura rig and holy shit did that look good. I don't know if it's to do with it being a more detailed rig or if the animations are better than they are in Maximo, but it, it looks even better. And once it was ported into Unreal, uh, it mapped into the default rig straight away without any problems. However, she she does now look as though she has grayscale on half of her body for some reason. Okay, so I, I went back and I, I tried again. And uh, this time when I tried again, uh, the grayscale was all over her body. Uh, and she was also like, looked like the hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> so... So that's where I am with the game, um, as as it is. Um, so I now have uh, a character that will go into Unreal and is usable, albeit a little high poly, but it's it's fine. It could be a lot worse. Um, and at least it's my own gay character as well. I did think about just going onto the uh, asset store and just buying something that was for, that was already rigged, that was already but I'm like, no, no, it needs to be my character. This is the whole goddamn point. This is my game. The play controller works. That's fine. I know that'll be okay. I've done that before in a tutorial, so that's... That's easy enough. And I've also got a load of asset packs as well, um, which will work really well with this character when it's rigged. So then that'll be that'll be that. We'll have a lot of the character movement done, a lot of that sort of stuff. That should all hopefully fall fairly quickly uh, into place. Um I just need to sort out <laughs> just need to sort out the rigging basically. So I have one rig where the rendering works perfectly fine uh, and that's okay, but I don't think it's as good as the that's the maximal rig, but I don't think it's as good as the Acura rig, because the Acura rig they wanted more info and i think um that they the animations seem to work a lot better with the acura rig in you know their sort of demonstration um s some of the uh some of the stuff in the Maximo rig just kind of made things look a little off, whereas with the Acura rig, um, all the animations looked really good, and the hand animation as well was really cool. That's all That's all working really well um, within Acura rig. But the Acura rig, which I think is the better rig, um, that's the one with the grayscale effect and uh, <laughs> the Quasimodo effect. And, yeah, and the other one, I need to go through and do all of the retargeting. So I don't know. Um, we'll just keep playing around with that. I might try and find if there's a third or fourth or fifth option for rigging. Um, I mean, yeah, I could actually just go through and rig it all myself in Blender, which would probably work. But, again, even doing that, you still have to do a shitload of retargeting and everything like that. So I don't know if I'll be saving any time by doing that either. So, yeah, it's all fun and games. We're getting there. Um, so hopefully this the next the next one the next dev log in a month or two's time she'll be running around the world I'll have like a sort of a fairly reasonable um, approximation of what that'll look like um, I'm also quite keen early on to get the cell shading effect um, in place because that's um, that seems to be relatively easy from what I've looked into it so I want to get that post processing in place just so that that way I'm then working on what it's going to look like you know um, rather than I'm a big believer as polish as you go um so that way you know I'm not I don't, I don't want to get all the way through the game and I've spent you know hundreds of hours building
building what I'm going to build and doing all this kind of stuff. And then afterwards, sticking on the post-processing layer, layer and then realizing that it looks awful or that some of the stuff that I thought work, would work doesn't work. And, you know, and I have to go back and redo all that. So I just get that in sort of fairly early on and then play around with that and make sure that that all looks groovy. So thank you very much for watching the video. If you've made it this far, um, please hit the like and the subscribe and all that kind of stuff. Appeal the algorithm gods, as everyone has to say, but it really does help me out a bunch and it doesn't cost you anything. So, you know, please do it. Give it a little, little, a little, a little, a little boop. Boop. I also stream on um, Mondays and Thursdays, 8 p.m. GMT time. Um, so if you have any questions or if you want to chat about it or about game development or anything like that, feel free to drop by. Um, I'll be finishing off Metal Gear Solid 1 this uh, on Monday, which will be whenever that is, tomorrow, hopefully, if I get this up tonight. And uh, as of next week, I will be starting L.A. Noir as well. So Cry Noir plays L.A. Noir. Ooh. Uh, so that'll be good. So yes, thank you very much. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you all um, in a wee while. All right, cheerio, guys. <laughs> see you later. Bye-bye.